this mic. Uh, just uh, this is actually mostly for the folks I'm testing this for, but I thought they'd want to see. Uh, this is the uh, test rig for testing the ODA headphone amplifier. Uh, the uh, amplifier is the little blue box sitting on top. The black box underneath is the load cell. It has two 1000 ohm 10 turn high precision pots in it. Um, right now they're set to 15 ohms. One's at 14.95, the other's 14.99, which is as close as they'll resolve. Still, I think 300ths of an ohm, 400ths of an ohm is fine. Um, so they are connected to the D scope analyzer up there. I have the lights on the bench turned off because uh, turning them on raises the noise floor just a couple of dB despite all the shielded cables um, just because of the environmental pollution. So this is the um, D, D scope software screen. Get it all in frame there. It's widescreen so it might actually fit pretty well. And uh, the two graphs over on the right are the FFT plot of the noise floor. Um, there's no signal right now. The input gain on the amplifier is set on zero, or the lowest, which is uh, not quite unity gain. Um, if you can see the mouse, our gain on channel A is you know somewhere between 100 and 102 down. Um, it's a little better on channel B, which is the right. Um, there's some running 16,000. FFT points with no averaging. Um, if we buffer this and average it out with uh, a high number of points, this will take a minute. Um, it will actually look much lower because it will it will remove all the average signal, which is actually noise. But it will show uh, spikes, which you can start to see forming right here. And these are power supply noise. So there's 60 hertz, 120 hertz, 180 hertz, 240 hertz, and so on. Um, so this, these spikes are power residual power supply noise. But you'll notice there, you know, this one's down at about 100 dB on the left channel, maybe 110 down on the right or on the second harmonic at 120 hertz. And you can see there. So this channel has a little less 60 hertz, but it has a, roughly the same upper uh, harmonic power supply noise. So let's take the averaging off, and uh, if we look here, you can see right here that I have my impedance set at 15 ohms. What this does is it tells the analyzer software to how to calculate the output power based on the voltage which of course is what it's actually measuring is the voltage coming out of the amplifier. So I'm going to go up here and uh, let's see here window uh, where is it automation help uh, where is it uh, I can't remember mm. Options? No, I don't know. Anyway, there's a, a way to turn on a slider for the generator function. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to set the generator at 2 volts RMS of output, um, which will, because this is almost unity gain, will give us up to 2 volts into 15 ohms. Um, so we'll turn that on. And we'll turn back on the uh, FFT analyzer. Whoops, put it back on 16K bins so that it's uh, responsive. You can see here our 1K spike, even with the volume control all the way down, we're only down about 67, 68 dB. So the volume control on this is not entirely effective. So you'll, you'll almost certainly hear music. Uh, I have not listened to this, so I don't know. But you can see the 1 kilohertz test tone. So you can see a little bit of second harmonic down here at about 120 dB, which is obviously really good. Um, so let's turn up the level on the headphone amp and see where we go. So I don't know if you can see it on here. This is our actual output voltage. This is watts, milliwatts actually, calculated based on the output voltage. You can see the 
fundamental rising, and you can also see the second harmonic, third, fourth, fifth, sixth harmonic. Um, generally speaking, the lower harmonics are not very offensive, and as I change the level, you can see the graph go up right there, the FFT plot. So right now we're at 230 millivolts on the output, 3.5 milliwatts of power. So let's just run this baby up and see where we get. So that's full throttle on the volume control. So our output voltage is 2.09, so it's very slightly over unity gain. Um, basically 0.48 in the left channel, 0.26 in the right channel, so we've got about a 0.15 dB or so channel line balance. Not bad considering a 10, 8 millimeter pot that's in this thing, 9 millimeter, oh, it's very small. Um, one thing I did find interesting, and that is because the uh, input product is after the uh, gain amplifier, that it actually has a lower distortion wide open than it does at partial volume. If you look at the FD, FFTs, because these are all at 100 dB, I mean, it's pretty low. Two thousandths of a percent THD plus in. So can, obviously, this is the noise floor down here. There's not very much in, um, as in noise. But if I turn the volume control down a little bit, the harmonic distortion actually goes up to 0.2%. And uh, even though the level has gone way down, um, we're at 1.3 volts of output. So if I turn this all the way back up, so we're actually putting out 293 on that one, 283, call it 290 milliwatts of power into 15 ohms. So let's turn this down and change our signal generator to have four volts whoops that's six four volts of output and at four volts of output you can see our fundamental is only 60 db down uh, roughly and you can see the second harmonic and this is the volume control all the way at the bottom so let's ramp it up see if we get clipping which you'll usually know because these upper harmonics will just start spraying across the screen. So right there at the volume control is straight up half a milliwatt of, or a quarter milliwatt of power, so actually less power than we had before because our input voltage is higher. Gain stage is having to work much harder into that pot load and we have uh, quite a bit more distortion. 80 dB down on the second, about 95, 90 so on the second, third, fourth. So there's second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth order distortion, but the ninth order distortion is at 120 dB down. It's not like it's a big deal. So let's ramp it up a little more. See where we go. So here's wide open, and you can see our um, we're actually producing a little over one watt of power at 0 .001, 0 .00, right at 0.002 percent distortion. Our really they're all really low this is 100 db down and our signals at a little over our uh, zero points a little over 100 uh, ze or our peak is a little over zero so this is second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth i mean you can see upper harmonic distortion all the way out to 11th 12th order but it's all below 100 db so it should be inaudible um, we're still not clipping at 1.1 watts into 15 ohms which is awfully good for some op amps and I believe the designer told me that one channel has more resistance in the output which might account for the uh, channel imbalance and uh, Martin if you're watching this this uh, hopefully will answer a lot of your questions for you our output voltage is low over unity gain like I said we're about 4.2 volts output um, so this is a at uh, full 1080p so hopefully uh, if you watch this full screen you'll be able to see all this pretty easily let's turn the volume down I'm going to ramp the generator output up to 6 volts I did some testing yesterday into a 600 ohm load and verified that it did not clip the input until about 6.6 .6 volts so 6 volts we should not clip the input but we may well clip the output as we ramp this up and get up higher so there's 1 volt of output um, which I said this is about straight up on the volume control and you can see we've got quite a bit more distortion uh, the uh, upper harmonics show up a lot more this actually will probably sound best with the volume control all the way up uh, so there 
is uh, three and a half volts of output, 800 milliwatts, and flight control is maybe at the two o'clock position. And uh, let's ramp it up a little more. See what we get. And we're clipping there. It's puking right now. You can see the huge spray of upper harmonics. 5.8 volts, 2.2 watts. It's just really unhappy right there. Let's just turn this down a little bit and see where it recovers. About 1.7 watts. Yep, about 1.7 watts before it. Here you can see all the, uh, just a huge spray of upper harmonics, which is why any amplifier needs to stay out of clipping. Most people don't have enough power, in my opinion, and I have done a lot of measurements to show it. So right now, it's working just about as hard as it can work. Um, I, I have some automated tests to determine the absolute clipping point of 1% THD. But just ramping this up slowly, there's 0 0.1%, 1 1.78, 1 1.76 watts, and you can see we're already getting a huge spray of upper harmonics. Even though our THD is only at 0.2%, it's technically not at the 1% definition of clipping, but it's clipping. It's, it's, it's hurting right now. Um, so we're going to turn it down. We don't want to kill it. Um, and now that is with a 6-volt RMS input, which even... Uh, the only DAC I know of that does that is the MyTech um, 24192 DSD DAC. It has about 6 volts of output, um, which, or maybe it's not 6, maybe it's 4.5. It's a lot. I have an Orlick Vega. It has 4 volts RMS output. So with DACs like that, using this ODA amplifier, you do not want to run it on anything other than the lowest gain setting. It will be unhappy. So let's set our generator level back at 2 volts RMS, which is the CD standard. And we're going to turn the gain up 1, which uh, looks to be, let's see what that gives us. We'll just ramp it all the way up and see where we're at. So that is 2 volts of input. We've got 4.7 volts of output. So we're about 7.5 dB of gain. Um, so, and uh, we're actually producing 1.5 watts. It's still not clipping. That is, uh, but given this, I would think if I turn this up to 3 volts, it will clip and we won't produce any more power than we had before. So there's 3 volts on the thing. We get a little warning from our D-scope stuff that says if I'm running digital outputs, it's going to be angry right now, but we're not. We're running analog, so we don't care. Um, but look at that. It, even though it's not clipping, we're only at four mil, 40 milliwatts. 3 volts of 